Hey yo, it's Guido coming at you with a tactics talk and a tank review of the EBR90 Tier 9 French wheeled vehicle. A light tank, you can see it right here in the garage. We will treat this in the standard act, give you an overview. We'll talk about the tech tree considerations, look at the 3D models such as it is. A comparison amongst its peers, which you can see down in the carousel. There aren't very many. There's only six Tier 9 light tanks total. Take a look at my stats, my setup, and then I'll give you some examples of gameplay of the EBR90. Now I'm going to do something here I don't usually do. I'm going to use a little, a few, a little, a little few superlatives on the EBR90. This is a fantastic at tier light tank. There is no doubt that this thing is next level when it comes to its capabilities. I will talk about what those are. I'll show you examples of gameplay, but I don't usually get into, hey, this thing's OP, and this is a situational tank. So don't get me wrong. I'm not standing here or sitting here telling you this is an completely OP tank and anyone who plays it is going to be a World of Tanks pixel tank god. However, in, in the right hands, in the right hands, and I, I get it, most tanks in the right hands are pretty good. This one's next level. It really is. The things it can do, other tanks simply cannot do. And because it's a tier 9 and lives in the better tier 9 matchmaking than the tier 10 does, at tier it is probably the best light tank in the game. I'm gonna, I'll hang my hat on that right now. We'll talk about it as we go. Let's get started. Here it is in game, and you can see from the description up here on the card that in the 60s, 75mm caliber guns were deemed outdated. It looks like 650 vehicles were updated with the 90mm, so this is no kidding a tank that was in French military service. 650 examples at least. And the other vehicles with the outdated turret and guns were removed from service, so the EBR-90 actually saw service. Pretty cool and a, a little bit unusual for the Tier 9 tanks. Some of the Tier 9s are actually no kidding tanks that, that were used, but others are just kind of fantasy tanks. Pretty cool looking tank. You can see that it's got four wheels. Fairly low profile. So let's take a look in comparison to other tanks. Pretty small tank, the 1390, but it's about the same size, really. Bit of a billboard, but unlike the 105, which has a very much larger turret, it's got a low profile turret, which limits some of its size from the side. The Spa Panzer is pretty big. You look at the T-49, nice and tall, but really comparable size with all the other light tanks. Just that the side's very flat, lots of wheels going along the side there. Weird angles on the armor. You know, frankly, it's got some armor. Not much, and neither does any of the other tanks here, except for maybe the 54 lightweight and a little bit the WZ-132A, but it's actually got a little bit better armor than some of the others. So it's not something you would certainly rely on, and it's got some weird angles and such. But this tank is obviously not about its armor. Let's take a look at the tech tree next. Tech tree considerations are very similar crew-wise to the rest of them. I've done reviews on the 6, 7, and 8. They're all four crew members. They're all in the same position in the tank, and the EBR-90 is no different, as is the EBR-105. So once you get your crew sorted out, this half line from Tier 6 to 10 are the same crew members uh, as far as positions go there's nothing really to, to switch around right there taking a look at the modules this is another tank that it looks like you can put everything on it without getting the, the upgraded wheels so you can actually unlock all this stuff then unlock the wheels last if you wanted to or you could simply go through the two engines and go straight to the EBR 105 I would not do that I would unlock everything on this tank because it is that good it is that good now you get the 90 millimeter CN90 F3, which is okay as a stock gun. It's the one that comes on the Lynx 6x6, so you're not getting a better gun as you come across. The stats are a little bit better, I believe, from the Lynx 6x6. You got a different platform, basically. But you're really looking for that 90 millimeter D921. That's the one you really want to put on this tank. A fairly capable gun for a tier 9 wheeled tank. And that's pretty much it for the tech tree. The crew should be easy. Just move it up from the Lynx, retrain them, and off you go and unlocking modules there's no real order other than what you want to do on that no limitations from what i can tell anyway all right let's move on from that to the 3d model which will not take long all right here's the, the 3d model and as you can see there's just not much it's about 40 millimeters obviously less on the side with 16 25 on the side of the turret the front's about 40 or so and this is the live version of tanks.gg so yeah that's the kind of an auto bounce angle but you know what I mean? You get a really bad, weird back shot on the, the other side of the armor. You're gonna you're gonna bounce. So the only thing that's ever gonna bounce on this is a really strange angle as you move it around here. A couple auto bounce angles, but still, 
I'll remember the tires are all in the way right here anyway. So what can you say? You're going to get pinned. But 40, okay, not bad. Still, it, most high pin HE rounds are going to go right into this thing. Remember that these tanks have pretty good high pin HE, as do some of the other tier 9, specifically the Spa Panzer, the RE251, for example. The tier 10s all have pretty good pin on HE, so a lot of mediums have decent pin on HE at this level. This guy is an HE magnet, so watch out for that you will absorb a lot of HE there. All right, let's move on to a comparison. All right, let's take a look at comparison right here. We got the uh, 90 and it's stable mates. There's not very many of them, a total of six tier nine light tanks, it looks like in the entire game. Firepower's down there pretty low, right? It's showing at least Wargaming's number. The Alpha is good at 240. It's comparable to the rest, minus the WZ-132A, which is more of a combat scout or a combat light tank. Penetration lags the fight really badly. Unlike the tank before, where the penetration is good to, to high at the tier eight tank, the tier nine has really bad penetration. So you're gonna be relying a bit on the HE round and some gold in certain situations. However, if you are poking people in the front, so to speak, with this thing's gun, you're probably playing it wrong. You're looking for side shots, rear shots, at which point 185 is gonna be more than adequate for most of the tanks, minus some of the the Russian tanks with really crazy angles and things like that. And then anyone's going to struggle with those, to be honest. Rate of fire is okay, not super high. It does take about six or so. It's, this says 7.8, but once you get further in arms and the rest of the things, a good crew, gun rammer, etc., etc., it's going to get around the six second regime. Gun traverse is very, very quick. And that is going to be good because as you're raging around and circling people, you want your turret to keep up. So I think that is something that they did game balance wise. There's no real reason why this tank's gun would traverse better than a tracked vehicle. It's kind of all the same idea on a turret and how it traverses and things like that. They just added some numbers because otherwise it would be very painful to keep the, the turret online. But if they felt that these tanks were overpowered, that's one of the things they could nerf, which would actually limit somewhat its capability to circle and strafe and things like that. Talk about the reload time. The gun depression is not great at minus six. Not great at minus six. That It will have trouble on some of the terrain on occasion. When you're circling people, you're on hills, on backsides with only 12 degree look up, only six degree look down or depression. It's gonna have some trouble and I do, I do have a lot of misses because I'm going over terrain or bumping over something and the gun just can't keep directly onto the enemy tank. And because you're gonna use auto aim quite a bit, you really have to watch when you click left to make sure the gun is actually still tracking the guy and you haven't lifted up off the target. Aiming time is extremely quick at 1.34 and this does help a lot with strafing, a lot with snapshots, a lot with the auto aim, I don't know if they call it a plus or enhanced capability auto aim, whatever it is they call it for the vanilla right there. Dispersion at 0.36 is pretty good, almost best in class, only slightly worse than the RU251. What does all that mean? It means that the gun is really capable as far as accuracy goes, and you're going to be snapping people right and left with this thing. DPM is on the low end, as you would expect. Most of the wheeled tanks are down there as far as the DPM goes, and that's average alpha with the rest, but a relatively slow reload there is going to give you a worse DPM than everybody else. Hit points is low, lowest in class, like all the rest of the wheeled vehicles. And there's the armor. So yeah, it's bad. Is it as bad as some? No, the T49 is worse. The RU251 is worse. And the, the other three are slightly better. Turret armor only at 40. Now we get to the mobility part, and this is where this thing really obviously starts to shine. Very light at 15.5. The lightest probably tier nine tank there is. If there's a lighter one, uh, well, tell me what it is down below. I don't I don't think there's a lighter tier 9 tank. So you're not going to ram anyone with this, although I do because it's kind of funny end game. You're already winning. Just come ramming in there and get your 50 hit points of damage while they strip off 500 of yours. <laughs> Engine power, whatever, because what we're looking at is the specific power of 40 and the speeds of 65 or 85. Notice it's as fast forward as it is backwards. So 65 in... I don't remember what do they call it this is rapid mode and this is travel or something I don't I don't know what they call it anyway you hit the X button and you get the boost right you get the afterburner it's up to 85 now the thing about that is 
that that is unprecedented in this game. The 70, 75 ish was kind of the fastest for the best light tanks, and this thing's doing a whole 10 to 15 kilometers faster. And that has changed a lot of the places these tanks can get to. It has changed a lot of the ways you can get in and get out with this tank. It has changed a lot of the ways you can use it end game to get up under TDs and light tanks that are unable to track you. People are getting better at it as they get used to the vehicles. They're adjusting their play style to deal with it, but still, this tank can do things that other light tanks cannot do. I didn't really say that too much about the Tier 8. The Tier 8 starts to do that, but the Tier 6 and the Tier 7, those are precedented speeds. People kind of understand those speeds and they're able to lead fire and do the things they need to do. At Tier, they're kind of unprecedented, but only until you get to the Tier 9 and 10 are you seeing speeds that you simply have not seen in the game, and that's really important for why these things are as good as they are right, right now. Switching to rapid and cruises very quickly at 0.1 second right there. Is that one second? I think it's one second, not 0.1 second. All right, concealment. This is a big deal. This thing is the best in clashing. My little symbol's over top of everyone else, but just suffice it to say that once you put brothers in arms, vents, camo, all the different things, maybe even food, you can get this thing up to about 45. 45, and that's while moving. Remember, it's a light tank. It holds that while it moves, and that is pretty dang amazing. This means that this tank, while moving, can sneak through seams that other tanks simply can't get through. I can't tell you how many times I have snuck through places where there is somebody, looks like they're pretty darn close, and they simply do not see me, or they don't see me till very late. And that also helps you with the idea of sneaking into TDs that are camping in bushes. Despite the fact that, and we'll get to it in a minute, your spotting range is abysmal, you can get so close to them that they have a hard time reacting before they see you. That's, and that's what's going on there with the camo. The view range is 330, which is abysmal. 380 is the worst out of the rest of the scouts. So like most of the light tanks. But again, brothers in arms, add the things you can do. You can get it out to a reasonable spotting distance. And really that's not how you spot with this anyway. It's not a standoff spotter. You're getting in amongst them and lighting them simply because you're so close. Simply because you're so close. All right, let's move on. All right, let's take a look at how I've done. And I've actually played 190 battles in this. Usually I go to 20 or 30 and we do the, the review. But I've been playing this thing pretty consistently because I wanted to find out what the wheeled vehicles really can do. And this one really is the sweet spot. I've got 100 battles also in the 105 at this point and did pretty good in it. But this thing lives in Tier 9 and it really is excellent in that niche tier 9 light tank realm 190 battles 61 percent completely solo 944 average xp you look over here i'm doing 1394 so nearly 1400 damage but almost 1200 assist almost 1200 assist for example in my 1390 which i'm pretty decent in with a 55 percent win rate i'm only doing 683 assist in the lightweight at 58 percent and a comparable number of battles I'm only doing 567 assist. Let's move down and find the WZ. Where is that guy? 132 at 56%, 154 battles. I am only doing 705 assist, a little bit more damage. That is, that is significant. That is a significant number because I'm, sit, I'm sitting at 500 to 700 assist on all my tier nine light tanks. This thing is a, a real outlier, and I have enough battles to prove that it's probably the tank and, and me playing the tank than, than just luck or RNG. I mean, that's significant, almost double. Sometimes close to double, at least 500 more in the case of this. That's pretty amazing, really, if you think about it. How much more assist damage this guy is getting. So how is it getting it? You're like, Guido, it's got terrible view range. Well, it doesn't. the view range doesn't matter because the speed is what gets the spots. You get in and you get out, and then late game is where this kid shines. If you can keep this thing alive to late game, then you are going to be an absolute superstar. And I've seen it happen. Now that I'm not playing as many of the wheel tanks and I'm playing other tanks, when I see that they've got a good player in a wheel tank late game, I know we are in huge, huge, big trouble especially if what's left are all the campers and the passives who are not very good otherwise at the game. They are simply unable to, to compete, unable to cope 
with what's going on now. You know, RNG will throw their vote in there. Sometimes they just get a snap and kill a guy and, and note it. That happens. But in general, these things are absolute game changers and, and sowers of chaos. End game. It's pretty incredible. 68% hit rate is another thing to note. Despite the fact they're doing nearly every shot on the move, it's still able to come up with 68. I'd rather be at 75, but if I consider the amount of shots I take while moving and taking snapshots, that's pretty amazing. That is a really good hit rate, and it's not hurting my damage too much because my average damage is about what the rest of my light tanks are. Slightly low, but pretty close. For a tank that's fairly anemic, supposedly, in the offensive side. So pretty impressive, I thought those stats, especially when stacked up and looked at against the other tier 9s. And the sample size at 190 is getting pretty close to being able to go, you know what, that's that's about how Guido's going to do in this tank. He's probably going to be around 60%. That's a good 2 to 5% better than any of my other tier 9 tanks. And this is completely and utterly solo in the EBR 90. Very, very interesting result for me on this thing. I really like this tank. I really do. Alright, let's look at my setup. Okay, for the setup, I have obviously the top modules. You can see I am carrying vents, a rammer, and the optics. I've got 20 AP, 8 heat, and 17 HE. That's a large HE loadout. I think one of the other streamers just did a challenge, a pure HE challenge with the, I want to say it was the 105, because the tier 10 has a 500 alpha HE. This thing has 300, and let's go back over here. It's easier to see on this one. 320 alpha. Large kits and a large fire extinguisher. Okay, there's a couple ways to set this thing up. You can see I'm, I'm making a bit of a, a, a commitment to the visual game by putting on coated optics. I would You can't use binoculars, so I wouldn't even bother. Obviously, you, well, you could bother, but you can't put them on because you can't use them. I would not bother with a camo net, which is something I like a lot for my light tanks because you're going to be moving so much. So neither one of those are in play, as, least, as far as I'm concerned. You could go with a vert stab. I think that's the only thing I would put on there different for the optics. I would definitely get the vents, because anything you can do to get your vision pushed out is good. And you're going to want a good crew. You can see mine's very good. Five skills working on their fifth. I did have to add a fourth guy that I drug out from another tank, because this is a three-place 1390, 1375, Bat Chat 12T kind of kind of crew, which only has three crew members. And since these guys have four, I had to go find somebody else. I drug him off of another tank, and he's comparable. So a good crew, maximize your skills with things like vents. Think about even using directives. For about 15, 20 games, I had 15 or 20 camo directives. These dudes right here for the crew, natural color, natural cover, <laughs> not natural color. That would be, it's my natural color. <laughs> That improved even more the camo. If you look down here, I have a concealment of 43.55, and that's without the directive and without food. You can drop the automatic fire extinguisher and put, co I think it's coffee and whatever it is. I did that for a while, and it helped It helped all the stats, but guess what? Because of all the HE flung at me, I kept burning to the ground, and I just I wanted to stop doing that. I say it every time, but getting lit on fire drives me absolutely crazy. However, you could do that. So you could run food, you could run a directive. There's also the directive for equipment with the vent purge, so that would add a few percentages as well. So I've left a couple things on the table that would improve my crew, but pretty solid setup right there. I think that's, this is, I think, the best one, with the possible exception of if you want to put a verge stab on there and get rid of the optics. I just felt like that extra little bonus on the optics was really, really going to be required for this tank. All right, let's look at some examples. All right, I've already made a couple videos of the EBR-90, and they're, they're kicking around out there. This is the full-blown review, and I saved this particular game to show on that. Now, this is Proc, which is really going to be one of the best maps for this tank. I'm going to go ahead and show you this. I'm top tier, noted. Coming around here, lighting guys up already, just taking a shot. And just watch as I auto-aim these guys. Remember that the auto aim shot into that guy, so unfortunately only 52. I don't pin him. Remember that the auto aim on this particular tank only has to get it, the pipper close to him. I'll spit it out, out here. Look at that. I'll spit it out in a minute. <laughs> you only have to get the pipper close to him, and it will lock them. But you do need line of sight. 
which means there are a few things you can do. You can't lock them through the ground or through a rock or through a building. So right there, see how I have line of sight? I just sort of got near them, I lock them up, you get those little crosshairs on there, meaning you have auto aimed them. So what that means though, is that when you are working your camera and your camera technique, if you lift, zoom out and lift the camera up a bit, your pipper can sort of look over the terrain, even though your turret, based on where your tank is, cannot have a line of sight, if you understand what I mean. So I think I've done it a couple times. So see how my pipper's a little higher? Clearly my gun can't see him. So let's see if I can auto lock one of these guys. 705 is probably not a great guy to try to go after. I'm not really gonna do much. But look at the speed. I'm just zinging around here. Now you can do this in other, other lights. The problem is that you're exposed much more and you're slower and it's much easier to hit the other lights. I'm going to come over here. I'm trying to get a lock on him, but I can't. And the artillery finally takes a pot shot at me. I'm tired of watching me zing around here. One thing to avoid is being very predictable. So watch out for that. And then you can see right there, I took some hits into the tires. I mean, that M53 killed two of my guys and completely slowed me down. So I had to survive that. And then I went ahead and clicked on the five. And the 432 is getting salty that someone ran into him. And now he is blue. We'll just keep moving around here. Now, I want to stay alive. Now, I've only done 52, and I've only got 62 spotting. And at this point, I'm really concentrating on the anti-scout mode here. I want to get rid of counter-scout. I want to try to get rid of the even 90. I want to try to get rid of this. Can't get a lock on them. It does have a little trouble at times, much like their regular auto-aim. Sometimes it's just very difficult to make it work. I don't know if they do that on purpose or if my technique is bad. No idea. Here we go. So we'll get a little try to get a lock on him. I think I just hit my own friend. Did I hit my own friend? I don't know. Nope, I didn't. Good. Now I'm just going to chase in here. Try to get a shot. 705 misses just based purely on the speed of this thing. 705's on a reload. I'm going to try to get a lock on him. Nope, can't quite get there. Even 90 comes back here to try to push me out of there. And I'll just keep moving. And that's really the thing. Just keep swimming. Keep moving with this thing. You'll see the LTTB is just leaving. It's like, you know, I'm tired of dealing with this. He keeps lighting me. I can't get a shot on him. I hate to say it. It's a tank that you kind of want artillery to be on your team on a map like this simply because you're going to soak up some spotting damage. You can see that lighting the 705 has nothing to do with my view range. It has everything to do with my speed. He's close enough. All I got to do is come up and over. Put my spotting port up and over there. Again, you can do that with any light tank, but this one's just so hard to hit. See how short a time I was exposed right there? Just minimize the exposure. There's an artillery strike into that guy. I'm up to 669. Getting a little gutsy. That's kind of bad right there. I was up on that flat for quite a long time. 705 really wants to get a shot on me see the even 90 making a run so look how fast this thing can react I react right over to where that guy is get a piece of him he gets a piece of me slows me down even my wheels just wobbling around once it repairs we're good to go and now the 705 is trying to tuck up a little bit more here Thought about maybe going around and taking a shot on him, but he probably would have been able to swing around fast enough. There's another thump into him. It's up to 786. One thing you'll find with these, I've said it several times, but it, a lot of times it feels like you're doing a lot of work for not a lot of result. 170 damage, 934 assists right now. But there's a lot of enemy tanks on the, on the board yet, right? They're all kind of camping in the back. There's several TDs that haven't been seen. There's a bunch of them up on the hill up there. And what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get rid of the 705. And then the, I noticed that even 90 has made a runner back into the backfield. So I'm going to have to abandon what I'm doing there and track this guy down. I don't want him to get through. So we're just nice and fast. I'm right back here. 
Thankfully, he misses me. I'm having a hard time getting the lock. There we go. We have the lock on that guy. Swing around that way. Looks like he is reloading. Only 120. That's unfortunate. There we go. Oh, it doesn't quite kill him, but a buddy does. And down he goes. Now I'll just dodge out. Because it's likely somebody has followed up on the 1 2 line. And guess what? The LTTB has. All of a sudden, he's back there. And I don't notice him here, I think, for a while. I'm like, oh, geez. There's another one back there. But the speed of this thing just allows it to react. There's another miss. The 263 actually missed me. There's the LTTB. We take him down. And just jump right over all that stuff. 263 dies. And we're up to 659 and 1269. Head right back over here. There's the AT15. Based on the numbers I see, I don't really expect much to be over here. I do get lit. Put a shot into him. That was my last HE shell. Now I'm going to come around here. Oh, see how the, the turret didn't quite keep up. And then the 130 PM is up there, unfortunately. Getting him lit. Now I'm just going to bail out of here because I don't want to get hit from several directions. And just watch the, the speed of this thing. The AT is just going to have a hard time getting a bead on me. Look at them. Both of them shooting. Boom, boom. AT gets a lot of shots. Oh, holy cow. Now there's a 12. 212A. That's a miss, unfortunately. And that just changes fight, right? I mean, we're right through those guys. Some people got some hits on them. They're kind of busy now with other people shooting at them. They don't really have time to mess around with me definitely lit. They're either missing or they have better things to do. And down goes their artillery. So we'll move back this way. Now this poor 130 PM. I'm going to give him line of sight. Make his shot as hard as possible. The other thing I know about this guy is he does not have a full turret. So once I get him tra tracked right there, I know I can just basically circle him. The artillery is going crazy. Looking for a track. I don't get it. I actually get hit by the AT-15, which is a bummer. Finally getting my speed back up. Shots coming in all around. It's just the speed of this thing. It's hard to deal with. There's a guy behind me shooting at me. Down goes the 15, AT-15. I know there's a VK right in here, so we'll come along the edge, wait for my chance. I'm hoping to entice my buddies. I'm going to use this bush. I finally slow down. Shot into his side and dog on it. That's a bummer. Things aren't one, so I'll keep looking around here. There's another shot in towards me. I'm going to come all the way around here, and I know from the stealthiness of this, I poke up. I don't think I get spotted. I didn't. So look how close inside the circle he is to me. And the camo allows me to poke up here. And he didn't even see me. Now he could have a bad crew certainly possible but that's pretty amazing that i can come across that field that close to him and not be seen even though he is a heavy so i've got three guys here i'm just trying to come up here and find there we go so we find him put a shot into him get some spotting damage we're up to 2878 2145 the last of them are on the back side of this hill, or at least maybe up on the top of the hill. Yeah, it looks like two of them are up on top of the hill. Having a hard time controlling it. Two of them die right away. There's a guy up there. Oh, there's their artillery. A shot into him, then I see the artillery. Come over here, look for a shot. There he goes. Their T-69 is dead. Can't remember. I think he may actually get a shot on me right here. I'm trying to avoid letting him have it. Or an easy one anyway. There we go. No, nope, it doesn't get a shot. We end up with 2,861, 2,878 assists and just kind of a, uh, a manic zooming around game and a great example of a fairly typical proc game with a, a decent player in an EBR90. It really can cause havoc. All right, let's move on to the second example. The second example, we're here on Corellia and we are on an assault map. 
or is, it is an assault game on Corellia. I spawn in over here on the northeast, and I'm going to go straight up this hill. This is an example of one of those things that this tank can do that other tanks simply can't. I am going to come all the way up here, get really quickly into this bush, and I'm going to get lights earlier than people typically can. There we go. Just put a shot on him, and we'll head on out. Yep, I got lit. Okay, kind of expected, so we'll just buzz on out of here. And I noticed right away, you know what, I don't have a lot of help over here. It looks like we're going to have a bunch of guys camping. I do a lot of zigging and zagging. I just don't want to get hit by artillery. I've only got a scorpion coming up. So I bail out of this thing and head over this way. Notice how fast I was going, and that was backwards, right? So I pulled into the bush, and I just zinged out of there backwards. I use that capability all the time in this tank. There's a lot of places where I can go, and I can get a shot, where normally you'd have to back out and turn around. But this thing, you just back out backwards and you can just disappear. You're gone. So I'm going to head back around this way. I'm looking for a better plan because I don't really like what is going on up in the northeast. Nothing good, that's for sure. And the other thing about this tank is I'm always looking for a way to get in behind the enemy, right? Now, right now, it's kind of suicidal. There's too many guns. But I'm just starting to, trying to find a place where there's not many of them and I can maybe sneak in and start creating creating havoc with their artillery or their camping TDs. And this thing will absolutely wreck camping TDs. Not because it gets in and destroys them itself, but because it gets in and gets them lit and they start dying from all your guns shooting them. You see the 12T headed over this way. We're just going to cruise through here. I'm trying to get a shot on them. It doesn't work. I sort of expected to get lit right there, but I didn't. We're going to spin around. It's not going great over here. It's not going great. We're really kind of losing both hills. We sent a lot of guys to camp on the hill. And I've got to somehow break this thing open a bit. Got to entice my team to do something other than camp. And I unfortunately do not get the kill. Zinging through the middle. This is pretty much suicide for nearly any tank. Pretty much suicide for any tank. But this thing is so fast. It's just so difficult to hit it that you actually have an expectation of surviving those things. Now, I wouldn't tempt fate too much. Now, I have just come across the entire middle of the battle, and I'm now all the way back on the other side. Because, as I looked at this, I went, well, there's not a whole lot up here. And these guys are sort of tearing up the few things that they sent up here. Now, there's a VK-100 and a JP-2, and unfortunately a Panther 8.8, .8, which I didn't notice until right about now. But I'm just going to come up here and see if I can't go... Oops, that didn't work. Really wish it would have. Would have been very clever had it worked. You do have to be careful when you go off some of those jumps. If you get sideways, it will absolutely kill your momentum. Then I noticed that JP2 is a near dead. He's a near dead. So, but I'm going to keep working on this guy. We'll just come up here. We'll hit him. Come around. Put a shot on the 8.8. .8. Not doing great. We're 2-5. to five. I really need to clean this up if I can or help these guys break this open. So we're going to come up here. Nope, that's a bounce. Watch out ramming your own guys. You will have that problem. And down goes the Scorpion. And it's now 2-7. Come up here. That's a bummer. Bounced him and he hits me. Very lucky. You will see a lot of that. They will have. They will get frustrated because there's a, quite a bit of hitting. And another bounce, hitting tires and not taking any damage. Now the 8.8 .8 is shooting HE amazingly, and we'll bail out of there. We'll bail out of there. We'll think about it for a minute. We'll head off this way. T28's down here. And now what I'm thinking is, I've disappeared. So now what I want to do, there's a couple near-deads here, and I really want to kill these guys off. And I'm just the guy to do it. The 34-3 is holding them, but he's face-to-face -face with them. He's getting arty and all kinds of mess. So we're actually going to come in here and see if we can't change this fight. I'm looking for the near-deads. There we go, there's one. Oop, would have been really nice if I'd have hit the JP2, but I didn't. This 8.8 .8 doesn't even see me. He has no idea what's hitting. Unfortunately, I'm not able to kill him. Make him miss, and the Artie actually gets a piece of me, which is incredible. 
just swing right around here. Get him, and I'm going to go off the cliff. Just right off the cliff. It's got that great suspension. Now the 100.01 has killed my JP2. So we'll come up here and see if we can't cause him problems. Got a piece of me. He did get a piece of me. But we're just going to nice and slow and take him down. Be careful when you're side scraping and grabbing guys like that. You will find yourself ramming them a bit and you will lose that every time. So had I even nudged into that 100.01, it would have cost me a lot of hit points and that is not what you want. I'm gonna head off of this away. Got a Scorpion G up here. Down he goes. That's four tanks in the backfield. These guys have sat in the back the entire game. Running into something I don't really want to run into. Now switching from the rapid mode to the travel or maneuver mode. The thing about it is, is the, the maneuver mode is very touchy with the 90 and especially the 105. Frankly, it's probably easier to zing along in rapid mode if you're trying to avoid a lot of uh, obstacles and weave your way through narrow areas. It's just easier to use. However, if you need to shift around, change your whole position, things like that, you really are going to have to go into the maneuver mode because the rapid mode, once you get slow, is very difficult to use. So I'm actually going to push back into here. Now that there are so few guns and their tanks are spread out as they are, I can really just come in here and cause chaos in the backfield. T-28 is there. Oh man, a crit no damage. That is painful. Come around the back. Oh, that hurt. 1390 got a piece of me. There we go, got rid of him. 1390's on fire. Just a great example of the chaos this thing can cause. Boom, down goes the 1390. And what looked like a complete and utter failure of a game. It's just broken open by this crazy wheeled vehicle. Notice my campers ha still haven't really pushed in. They're st still, still camping. And we got two minutes. Two minutes that RHM is probably still hanging out over there and not very fast. So I'm not worried about him. The Sumo or the W2 should, WT should find him. I am worried about being shotgunned by the artillery. There he is. I swing around and find him. I'm just going to dodge. Holy cow. I don't want to go right at him. It looked like he was aiming right in, waiting to shotgun me. Bloody Patton is nearly 100%. Got a minute 34 to track these two guys down. There's no way we're going to be able to cap right now. Come back around here, get on cap. Make him think about that for a second. Now I know the artillery saw me coming around that way, so I waited a little bit just to make him a little bit more unsure about what's going on. These things are very slow. He's simply not gonna have enough time. We'll take him down, no problem. He basically just bet Bet the come that I would come around the same way right there. There's the WT, or the RHM, sorry. Sitting up there, so we'll just come at him. WT is looking for a shot. We got 45 seconds. Stop right here just in case he's looking my way or coming at me right there. Here comes the Patton. I wanted to wait a few minutes. I didn't want to give him a chance to reload a couple times and maybe do enough damage, kill two of us, and keep the other one from killing them in 28 seconds. I'm like, where is he? Oh, there he is. Turn back around. Just come up here. There he is. I'm just waiting for the... Get the lock on. There we go. Oh, daggummit. That would have been epic for the eighth kill, but I didn't get it. Then I'm yelling at the patent. Ram him! <laughs> Ram him! Do something! <laughs> Down he goes. The WT finally gets him. So we get seven kills, 2,622. Another example, was this the most epic damage game ever? No. 
did the mobility and the capability of this crazy tank with a good player behind the wheel absolutely change the entire complexion of that game simply because of its crazy mobility? Absolutely. All right, one more example. All right, I was going to actually show an ace tanker on proc as the third example, but I already showed you a proc. Suffice it to say, I got an ace tanker on proc. I'll probably make a video of it later. This is Ensk. I'm top tier, granted, in a 357. But an Ensk is a bit more closed in map, right? It's a little more crowded map. So I'm going to initially work out in the field right here. And I was going to call this one, You Just Have to Laugh, because you really do. So I'm droning around out here. I have a couple other scouts. It's not just me getting lights. I have a whole 33 assist. But I am drawing fire. So I'm running around here. I got some logs going crazy. And <laughs> the graphics are funny sometimes. One thing I haven't mentioned, if you want to turn this thing as sharp as possible, you're going to press W. You're going to turn your wheel with your W, A, S, D, A or S, right? And then you're going to come off the W. And that will turn it as sharp as possible. All right, so you're going to coast for just potato with your right or left pressed down, and it is going to make a super sharp turn. So watch as I do this. You'll notice the difference. That's just kind of a regular turn right there. And when I want to make a sharp turn, that wasn't one of them. I, I probably already did a couple of them. But we're out here just kind of having a good time, lighting guys up. And I'm really tempting fate to some extent. Eventually one of them is going to get lucky and figure it out and get a shot on me. But look at all the misses going on, just taking shots as I go. Whoop, there's a little cut where I came off the accelerator just enough to get the cut going. And now I am going to change my mind. I'm gonna go somewhere else. Hey, that was fun. We worked on that part of the map. Now let's go see what we can do over in the city part of the map. I see the IS and the Panther are working on the outside. There's only a T20 there right now. There's three guns left or removed from the game. I can see one. There's now more, what? Four games, guns removed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tanks. So there is a Panther in there. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus the RD is 13. That means there's only two unaccounted for. And let's just come in here and see what kind of chaos this EBR-90 can cause. Only 587 assist, 159 damage. But I'm going to come back here, and you're going to see them get in a complete kerfuffle. Come around here, I missed. That's a bummer. He takes a hit. Come back around this way. Boom. Get a shot on him. He gets some on me. I ram into the IS. Not ideal. And look at them. They're all reacting. Here they come. They're coming back. Like, oh my gosh, they're behind us. Let's all turn around. And I, so I go, okay. They all turn around. I'll just come around this way. Come, come over here. We'll get a light on or a lock on that. Oh, that was a miss. That's too bad. No big deal. Just keep trucking. There's that little come off the accelerator turn. We'll just stop for a moment and we'll come back. Type 58. 59 is going into the back. And we'll just come back around behind him again. Here we come. Hello, T20. There's a shot for you. How'd you like that? He's like, oh, geez, that guy's behind me again? No, now he's in front of me. I get tracked. Go around the corner. I can't reload in time. And I'm out of here. Back around the corner. That guy takes a shot. Try to look for a lock. Get a shot on bounce. No big deal. He misses because I'm just moving too fast. And I sneak. Oh, he got a piece of me. That's fine. I just pulled him away from what was going on. He's chasing me. He's chasing a guy he cannot possibly catch. And I'll just swing back around this way. Now, my panther is in there amongst him fighting the guy. So how can I help that panther? Well, let's see. We'll come around this way. Oh, there's two of them in there, but they're kind of busy with that guy. So let's just come in here and we'll go ahead and auto-lock that guy. We'll shot on him. Down he goes. The other panther doesn't really realize I'm here. Nope, now he does, so let's keep going. He's going to chase me. <laughs> the RU gets a piece of me. Go ahead and fix it. Liberal use of kits with this tank, for sure. And I've just got the speed. All right, fine, he's coming. Let's just get out of here. We'll just head on out of here. We'll auto-lock that guy. Put a shot on him. There he goes. Back around this way. Back around behind the poor RU-251. And down he goes. <laughs> Uh-oh, now we've got a 25T. Notice I'm in the maneuver mode where I can turn much faster. And I go into the acceleration. That's fine. He gets a shot on me, but I get away. I put one on him. 
I'll just keep trucking. Around the corner. I get a piece of the... the kill the panther. There they are. Another shot into him as I go by. Probably could have swung around and got one more in on him. I might get one more. I'm not sure. Do I get this kill? I don't think so. I think he, Yeah, I don't get that kill. And there you go. Right, 1,681 damage. Not, not a whole bunch. 587 assist. But just complete chaos. Complete chaos. The thing is creating opportunities for other players. It's moving the enemy team from side to side, making them chase you uselessly. It's basically a force multiplier if it's played well. Clearly it can be uh, erased from the map very quickly. RNG has a vote, all those good things. But a good example of using it in a more tight spaced kind of map, that's how you sort of have to run it. it only works if the enemy spread out a little bit or a few guns are remain. Clearly you can't go running through Himmelsdorf at the very beginning of the game and expect to do the things I just did right there. But in the right situation, noticing what's happening in the match you're in, it is definitely doable and you can get through tight corridors and things like that. All right, let's sum it up. All right, well, that is it for my review of the EBR-90. This is the best light tank at Tier 9. Might be the best light tank in the game as of right now. Again, I, I usually don't go with the superlatives too much, but it really is. It's just a fantastic tank. Maybe it has a lot to do with the fact that I like it, that I play it well, so take that with a grain of salt. One thing I do want to show, and I don't know if I showed this when I was doing the record. Let's go back to Garage here. Here's, here's one of the most interesting things to me about this tank. Look at the number of Pascucci's I have in only 190 battles. 19. 19. 10% of my battles I killed two arty. And 10% of my battles I've killed two arty. That's not counting the number of arty I've caused to be killed because I got in amongst them. That's not counting the number of times I've killed one arty. An amazing, absolutely amazing late game arty and TD killer either lighting things up or getting them dead. Now what's interesting, even at 197, I'm only at 77%. There are people out there doing well better than me because I'm even with a 61% win rate, I am still only at 77.64%, not even close to my second mark. Not even close. This is a very good light tank. It really is. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Let me know what you think down below. I've kind of gone off the top rope on this one and said a few things I don't usually say as far as it being OP, being a great tank, being the best tier 9, a lot of superlatives there. Let me know what you think about it. All right, later.